This is probably not the voice that you were expecting. It's Sparky, your fourth favorite North American Brawlhalla commentator. Egg asked me to fill in for him while he's getting his wisdom teeth out and has a mouthful of gauze. Aside from making me now the second most electrifying man in Brawlhalla esports, this patch has a ton of content in it. But don't worry, I'll break it down for you. I will be your bald, wrestling-loving Sherpa through this massive Brawlhalla crossover patch. I can't believe I'm saying this. WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment, is in Brawlhalla. This is without a doubt the highest profile crossover patch we have ever had. And it goes without saying that the publicity that good old BH will get because of this is off the charts. Along with that, we've got some balance changes too. So buckle in, this will be a fun one. If you've been paying attention to the news, then you know that we've got four WWE stars crashing into Brawlhalla. John Cena Hattori, Becky Lynch Nash, Xavier Woods Bodvar, and The Rock Sentinel. There's also a unique wrestling themed game mode, Brawl Down, with the ring, and chairs, and tables, and everything. It's the current Brawl of the Week, so queue up with a friend and enjoy. As with the other crossover events, there's bonus gold on login and a UI takeover as well. The eSports tile now has a different landing page on PC and Xbox, and along a similar note, there's a bunch of user experience improvements, including changes to meet the legends and various menu buttons. But you know how these videos go, we're getting into the meat of the patch now, balance changes. This patch was giant. Not just because of the WWE crossovers, but also in terms of balance. This is going to be a long one. As a disclaimer, this is Egg's video. I'm just the talent, so the opinions presented here are all his, not mine. So blame him if they're bad, unless they're good, and then they're ours. Axe received a buff to both the fixed and variable force on Dare, which in my opinion wasn't really needed. The point of the Axe rework last balance patch was to buff onstage Dare and nerf offstage Dare while making Ground Pound the more effective offstage option. Now, Dare is great at higher HP values offstage as well, which is a little questionable, but we'll see how much this affects gameplay at all levels. I think the Axe rework was a great way to nerf Axe at lower levels by nerfing the power of early Dare Gimps and buffing it at higher levels by giving it more complex options, but now the Dare offstage nerf is slightly reverted. The two frames of stun that Blaster's Inlight received in the Heatwave patch is now reverted, so Inlight into Nair is now back to being a tight string instead of a true combo. To compensate, they decreased the time between the second and third shot to make it harder for someone to interrupt in 2v2 and also less frustrating to get hit by, as the move ends quicker after it's landed. Downlight also received a significant change, with the knockback angle of the final shot launching the opponent more vertical than before. This makes D-Light combos much more consistent, including D-Light Dare at low HP and D-Light Recovery at high HP. The three hit D-Light Chase Dodge Diagonal Up Sair in light is still possible as the new angle doesn't make much of a difference in white HP. Sair also received a small nerf of minus one damage, which isn't really a big deal. Cannon received a small series of nerfs across the board that overall reduced the oppressiveness of the weapon. D-Light has a slightly smaller vertical hitbox, although it still catches people pretty far up in the air, and plus one frame of fixed and variable recovery each. Cannon recovery also got hitbox adjustments, reducing the threat at the edges and bottom of the move. Sayer got a minus two frames of stun on the final hit, and Sidelight got its backward hitboxes trimmed down. No change is huge enough to where Cannon is gutted by any means. I'd say the biggest change is the Sayer stun nerf, but Cannon is still definitely good. Gauntlet's got the smallest change in the patch, plus one base damage on Inlight, which tells us that BMG is pretty happy with where Gauntlet's are balance-wise, and at this point in time, I am too, so that's good. Hammer seems like it also got a small change, but this one has much bigger ramifications than the Gauntlet's change. D-Light now has two frames of extra stun, so now it's easier to land those tight D-Light combos, especially on lower dexterity. This also means legends with D-Light signature strings get a small buff, especially Scarlet. D-Light Insig on Scarlet now covers seven dodges and is unjumpable. That's too scary. I don't like that.
It also has six frames of extra gravity when gravity canceled, which is a nice change and makes it much more consistent. Katars. Oh boy. Katars got a lot of changes this patch, which I guess was kind of expected with how they've been dominating recently. Don't worry, they're still good. It's not all doom and gloom, but they did get nerfed. D-Light has two less active frames, two less max frames of stun, although the lower stun value remains the same, and plus two frames of recovery on whiff. With all that said, this move is still insanely good, so I wouldn't worry about D-Light if you're a Qatar player. What I would worry about is Sidelight. The Sidelight force changes from all the way back in the Adventure Time patch that made everyone start complaining and saying Qatars are too good now have been sort of reverted. I'll explain. In the Adventure Time patch, they changed Sidelight from 10 Variable Force to 0 Variable Force, and 35 Fixed Force to 40 Fixed Force. The increase in Fixed Force means Sidelight hits very slightly further away no matter how damaged the opponent is, hence the term Fixed, and the removal of Variable Force means it always hits in the same spot, regardless of the opponent's HP. They also increased the stun by one frame to make sure lower dex Qatar characters could still land Sidelight in light and Sidelight D light true. In the WWE patch, they increased the variable force to 8 while not changing anything else. This means the fixed force is still 40, so the increase in base distance hasn't changed, and the extra frame of stun is still there. What does this mean for overall gameplay? At low HP values, Sidelight is exactly the same as before. However, at high HP, like before the Adventure Time patch, Sidelight will knock the opponent too far to get a true follow-up, although you can still land a solid string. Because Qatar's Sidelight had 10 variable force before the Adventure Time change and now has 8, you can actually combo for slightly longer than before, but obviously not forever like how it was for the past couple months. This is a good change in my book. To compensate, Inlight now has a faster startup by one frame, which makes comboing Sidelight Inlight and stringing other moves into Inlight a little bit easier. Sidelight True combos into Inlight at low HP and Dash Inlight at higher HPs, all the way up until the Deep Deep Red, so I wouldn't be ready to say Katars are gone yet. Sidelight still has a true combo to kill percent. Dare got a damage nerf of 2 to the grounded version which isn't a huge deal because it only did 6 before anyways, and a stun decrease of 1 frame, probably to remove the Dare Sidelight True combo exclusive to Lin Fei. It seems like BMG doesn't want to restrict Qatar True combos to only higher dex legends, as they changed this one that was only for Lin Fei, and they removed the barrier to get Sidelight Delight True for only 6 plus dexterity legends. I'm personally not a fan of the dex exclusive combos as well, so I like these changes. Scythe got a handful of nerfs, including a pretty big one to Nair. It has one frame of extra recovery, which is no big deal on its own, but now there's pretty much no momentum when you hit it. This means that Nair is a lot weaker both on and off stage with the reverse version, and very slightly weaker as a combo tool with the normal version. Previously, a reverse Nair off stage actually couldn't lead into any guaranteed follow up, as the Scythe user couldn't reach the opponent if they jumped out. Now, it pretty much can't lead to even a tight follow up regardless. On stage, reverse Nair D-Light loops are completely gone, and normal Nair Sair won't work as well in certain situations because your momentum is frozen. Combo routes after Nair will have to run through the normal version now, and will pretty much be restricted to Sair or Recovery after because of this change, which makes the weapon a lot less freeform and a lot more of the same thing. That makes Scythe lose a little bit of what made it cool and appealing for me to play. That you could choose and change your route post Nair to go vertical or horizontal and mix up your opponent. You know, hit him with the unexpected stuff. We'll see how much this ends up changing about the weapon. It definitely feels a lot more stiff to play, but it's still got good fundamentals, so it's not like Scythe is bad now by any means. Inlight got nerfed too, with two frames of extra recovery on whiff, which makes the move a little riskier to throw out as well as riskier to use to try and catch multiple dodges at once, because if you miss, there's a higher chance of getting punished. Ground Pound also got a hitbox reduction towards the top of the move. To balance all this out, Sair got a stun buff of 2 frames, which means that Sair Nair strings are harder to escape at lower HP, and grounded Sair follow-ups are much tighter. If you catch a dodge with a normal Nair around 30 damage or less, you can get a guaranteed Sair into a guaranteed 50-50 with a chase dodge diagonal up Nair to catch jumps and a falling Nair to catch no jump or fast fall, each leading into another Sair. 
This was possible before, but the second nair actually wasn't a 50-50, as the opponent could jump out at just the right angle. The two frames of extra stun mean that it's now a real guessing game, although it won't work if the sair angle doesn't cooperate. This Sair buff doesn't counteract everything else that was changed about Scythe, especially Nair, but it does make some lower percent combos a bit more consistent. Spear got a couple buffs to Nair, plus 2 frames of stun, and minus 2 frames of recovery. Basically it's a bit safer, a bit easier to follow up after. Sword recovery is now more consistent, which is a change we've been asking for for a while now, so I'm happy to see it implemented. The final hit now has an increased hit window from 1 to 3, and the move transitions instantly from spinning to the final launching hit. Hopefully recovery won't drop as often now. Bo received a stealth change, which isn't actually in the balance section in the official patch notes. Dare no longer has the super close hitbox on the aerial version, which was technically a bug according to BMG. This removes the super niche and mostly impractical inlight dare true combo. Azoth's Axe Neutral Signature now has minus 2 frames of recovery on both the air and ground landing versions. Slightly safer, not a huge change. Isaiah's Gun Side Sig got minus 5 frames of recovery time, which makes it more in line with Ada's Gun Side Sig, where you have to punish it in the active frames and not recovery frames. A good change in my book, this move's risk-reward was a little skewed towards risk. Petra's Neutral Sig on Gauntlets got tuned down a little bit with plus one frame of recovery, plus one frame of startup, and decreased force at higher percents. This Sig is still super strong, so no worries if you're a Petra player, and yes worries if you queue into her. Rayman got big boy buffs. D Sig on Gauntlets can now be held for one and a half seconds instead of just over one second, and got minus eight frames of recovery. Azoth in Sig is noticeable with minus two frames. This is eight, so that's a huge buff. Insig and Side Sig on Gauntlets can get the charge version again when you gravity cancel it, which was removed by accident when they made it have faster startup a little while ago. Also a meaty buff. D Sig on Axe also got buffs, which is kind of wild because this Sig was already very strong. It starts up 3 frames faster and can be held for 15 frames longer before releasing. On top of that, his Side Sig on Axe travels faster and deals 3 more damage than before. Overall, this is a great patch for Rayman buffs on both of his weapons, although the gauntlet buff is kind of inconsequential, and buffs to all but one of his signatures. Might be time to bust out the ray! Taro's got a small change to his axe side sig, minus 3 frames of recovery. This change kind of uses the same logic as the Isaiah change, there's a lot of active frames, so let's reduce the recovery frames to compensate. I'm a fan! Taro's also got buffs across the board, maybe we'll see some more of the gawk! Yumiko is another legend that got only buffs, which has kind of been a trend for her recently. D Sig on Bow now has more stun, deals more damage, and has less variable force, which makes it a lot easier to follow up after. D Sig on Hammer also got force changes, with more fixed but a lot less variable force, so it's also easier to follow up after at high HP values. Finally, In Sig and Side Sig on Bow got minus 2 and minus 1 frame of recovery respectively. A good day to be a Yumiko player, especially since those 0 to deaths off of In Sig are still in the game. Katars nerfed, Scythe nerfed, Cannon nerfed. The top 3 weapons according to many pro players all got toned down, so where does that leave us? In my opinion, Katars are still very strong and will have a solid place in the meta regardless of these changes. I don't think they're the best weapons in the game anymore, but that's also a day one opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. I think Scythe got the hardest nerfs, but the base kit is pretty strong regardless, so the weapon's still good. Dare, which is one of the scariest moves in the kit, went unchanged, meaning that it still has some crazy active frames and still has the Dare ground pound true combo off of the wall. I could still see it being a top tier weapon, but both its damage and get potential were pretty significantly nerfed. I personally am not a fan of the Nair change because removing movement and freedom typically feels bad. I would have much preferred nerfing the damage or stun time, both of which would reduce its effectiveness. Cannon received the least impactful changes of the three, with frame data changes on only D-Light and Sair. The hitbox adjustments will make it less threatening, but Cannon was scary because of the combination of long, punishing follow-ups and huge hitboxes. And only one of those was really changed. The D-Light hitbox adjustment will make it so some aerial D-Light follow-ups won't work. But don't get me wrong, the hitbox on it still hits pretty far up. The extra recovery time on whiff is noticeable, especially on lower decks, but it's not like the move is gutted. 
Despite the nerfs, Cannon may actually see an increase in play now that Katars and Scythe are weaker. Or went unchanged. And I think that that, in combination with the Katar nerfs, will result in an increase in both play and on tier lists. I think Orb is a lot better than other people tend to think it is, probably because I play it. And now that top tiers have been tuned down, Orb may be ready to take one of their spots. Despite the Inlight stun reduction, guns got buffed. They got buffed. The Inlight true combo change was kinda out of nowhere and I've already blotted it out of my memory. I'm glad that's reverted. The big boy change we gotta talk about is D-Light. D-Light recovery is now way more consistent, which increases guns KO power by a lot. To be fair, D-Light is a punishable and risky move to toss out, but on the other side, pretty much any D-Light that lands in red will lead to a knockout. Personally, I think D-Light recovery is fine. Maybe it should just kill a little bit later, but that's whatever. Guns are going to be on the rise for sure, especially since Katars have been nerfed. Hammer was already on the rise, and with the D-Light buff, it's more consistent and a bit easier to play than before. I think Hammer is going to see a ton of play in 2v2 because of its amazing area control and definitely a ton of play for the next couple weeks in all game modes when everybody tries out the WWE characters. Some weapons, namely Orb and Bow, will probably fly under the radar because of the buzz coming from the top tier nerfs, but it seems like overall BMG is really listening to the community on what to change. I think Scythe could have been nerfed in a different way because of how stiff Nair feels now, and Axe probably didn't need the dare buff, but that's just me as an armchair balancer, so take that as you will. As a pure content update, this patch is actually insane. Like the highest profile content update Brawlhalla has ever received, no contest. It's so cool. All in all, this is a great patch. Thanks, BMG. And make sure to esket it on over to twitter.com forward slash who is sparky and smash that MFing follow button. Later, duders. And make sure to esket it on over to twitter.com forward slash who is sparky.